Ladies and gentlemen, hey hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is that time of the week once again. It is Tuesday and unless you're a Call of Duty fan, that might not mean much, right? But if you are a Call of Duty fan, then that means it is update day, the most important day of the week as Modern Warfare and Warzone get some brand new content to check out. And that is exactly what we got going on today. Plus, in addition to today's update, we are also one step closer to the Call of Duty 2020 reveal, as today we made it past the second to last step in the Pawn Takes Pawn Easter Egg. So, as we go over all the changes in today's update and the next step in the reveal, if you enjoy the video at any point, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new to the channel, or if you happen to be a part of the 64% of viewers who are not already subscribed, this is the place to be if you want to stay up to date with the latest Call of Duty news, intel, updates, setups, everything like that, so feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. Now, when it comes to today's update, uh, have no fear, this one is not a title update, so Xbox users, don't worry, there's no uh, surprise 66 gig update today, this one is actually just a smaller game settings change or hotfix update, like what we usually see on most Tuesdays. So whenever you go to get on the game next, you'll get the whole update requires restart thing, and then you'll be able to play like normal. No time spent downloading or copying with this one, so pretty much all good news there. Now getting into the changes for today, starting off over in multiplayer, we've actually got a few new limited time modes that were added in. Uh, first and foremost here, we have the face off mosh pit, which is pretty unique because this is a completely different twist on face off or gunfights or 3v3, whatever you want to call it. So basically, this is 3v3 for the player count. Uh, it takes place on the gunfight maps like Livestock and some of the other older ones, but it's not actually gunfight. Instead, it is the 6v6 modes that we're used to seeing, like Hardpoint and Grind, so on and so forth. So it's a pretty big change of pace to the usual gunfight maps where, obviously, things are not nearly as objective-based or chaotic as they will be in this mode. Then, we also see the return of Cyber Attack Pro this week, which is basically just like original Cyber Attack, except I guess it's professional now, and apparently being professional means it's almost kind of exactly like Demolition. Because in Cyber Attack Pro, you end up getting to respawn if you die, instead of going down and having to wait to be revived. So you still have all the bomb sites to go after, but you respawn. Like I said, it's basically Demolition, but hey, if you want a faster Cyber Attack mode, uh, that's going to be available for the next week or so. Then, as far as the rest of the playlists go for this week, we've got the more usual modes of Quick Play, as always. And then we also have Standard Ground War, Gunfight Blueprints, and finally the Season 5 Mosh Pit, which is actually a handful of game modes on the maps of Oil Rig, Soldal Harbor, Cheshire Park, Hovik Sawmill, and finally Kandor Hideout. So we've got a mix of the new-ish DLC maps and various deathmatch and objective modes on them. And unfortunately, that does mean there is no shoot the ship or anything like that as of now. We may see something along those lines added in later this week, but of course, only time will tell there. Then, moving on into the store, as always, we do have a few new bundles to check out here, and actually, we've got some pretty cool bundles this week. Uh, the first one is actually going to be a brand new operator bundle. This is the Velikin Operator Bundle. This runs for 2400 COD points and features, of course, a skin for Velikin, as well as the actual operator unlock alongside an LMG blueprint that features dismemberment and the Shadow Tracers, a shotgun blueprint which has the exact same as well, an operator equip for Velikin, a vehicle horn, a finishing move, a vehicle skin, a charm, a calling card, and also a spray. So honestly, there's quite a bit of content in that bundle alone. Then, we also have the Tamagunchi Turbo Bundle, and that's gonna go for 1200 COD points. This one features a new Tamagunchi watch, 14 Tamagunchi charms, a sticker, and then finally three emblems to round things out there. Now, getting into the Warzone updates, here we honestly didn't see a ton of changes compared to what we already had in the game from last week, but we do still have Mini Royale as the limited time mode. Uh, this has actually been around for a few weeks now, it's not too often we see the LTMs stick around for this long, but then again, Mini Royale is actually pretty fun, at least in my own opinion. Uh, it's definitely very, very fast paced. You get your loadouts pretty early on into the game, and then it's a very hectic few zones, since everything is a bit more condensed, I guess you could say. Then, alongside Mini Royale, we also have the more usual playlist of Battle Royale quads, trios, duos, and solos. So, solos is in fact back to normal this week, no more stimulus or buyback as it was called there. Then we also have Plunder Blood Money, and we've got trios going on for that. Now, when it comes to these smaller game settings changes, Sometimes we see some backend updates go live like some weapon tuning or some bug fixes or other stuff like that, and sometimes we don't. And today was one of those times where nothing happens behind the scenes, and I think to a lot of players, 
myself included, that's kind of a disappointment because I know a lot of people were hoping to see a fix to the broken FAMAS glitch that has just been absolutely dominating Warzone for like the past 24 to 36 hours. Uh, basically, if you use the underbarrel shotgun on the FAMAS right now, it'll end up one-shotting people through full armor within, I believe, 15 meters, which essentially makes it the best close quarters weapon by far. Uh, it's not even funny how good it is, or I guess I shouldn't say how good it is, I should say how broken it is because it's just nuts what this thing can do. But that said, Infinity Ward did tweet saying, we've identified the issue with the FR556 and are currently working on a fix. We'll share more details as they become available. Thank you all for your patience. So this is going to get fixed. A lot of people were hoping it was going to happen today, but unfortunately, it looks like it's gonna be something that maybe will get fixed later on this week or early next week with the update next Tuesday. Now, outside of what changed today, I also wanna quickly look over at the Trello board since we haven't looked at that in a hot minute. And to be honest, most of the in-progress changes listed on it right now are in fact a bit older, so instead, I'm gonna go ahead and look at the changes that we know are actually set to be fixed in a future update. So starting off over in multiplayer, here we see they're fixing the following issues. The tracker footprints appearing on the grounds even when tracker is not equipped. Uh, some battle pass and rank progress issues for challenges being weird. Tracers losing their effect on the M4 when you go to change the ammo. People being able to turn the riot shield the wrong way. The Season 5 Week 1 challenges not saying personal radar when it should. And finally, the flaming throwing knife not resetting dead silence when you get a kill. Then for Warzone, here we see they're fixing the parachute glitch. Finally, this one is uh, super, super annoying to run into. It's been around for a while as well, so honestly, I'm surprised it's not fixed yet. But apparently that is getting fixed in a future update. Alongside an exploit near the prison, the yellow highlight in stimulus not working correctly. Self-revive just randomly disappearing. The downed icon showing when a player starts the most wanted contract, and finally a riot shield animation glitch. So we can effectively expect to see those fixed, likely I would say with the next title update. Then alongside today's update, it was also day 5 of the Pawn Takes Pawn Easter Egg or the COD 2020 Easter Egg. Uh, today we actually saw the tape just for 1979, which is kind of interesting because every other day we've gotten 2 years, today is actually the first single year tape that we've gotten so far, so like I said, kind of strange there. but. Today's tape eventually gave us the code for the shack outside of the TV station. Uh, the code here is 274-95810. And once you get inside of the shack, there's actually a bunch of pictures and blueprints for rockets. There is also a map of Verdansk with the stadium and downtown and a few other locations highlighted. But honestly, we could actually see a lot of this just by jumping and peeking in through the window before the shack was even accessible in the previous few weeks. So really, we didn't get anything too crazy out of this one shack alone. However, even though the TV station shack didn't provide us with a ton of new intel, because we were able to actually access the shack and see all of the missing Venona ciphers, the E equals MC squared page that's on pontexpawn.com slash EMC2 was updated to show that tomorrow, August 19th, is going to be day 6, aka the final day for the Pawn Takes Pawn Easter Egg. Now, tomorrow, presumably we're going to see another videotape. It may end up being another single year one, just going off of the crossed out section. It doesn't look super long, so maybe it'll just be another solo year. And from that, we're either going to get another code for maybe a new bunker, or we're going to get some other kind of event or code that puts us on some kind of different hunt. We know that we still need to get into Bunker 11's second door, and as of now, we've got no idea what that code is going to be or even where to find it. And so whatever comes of tomorrow's Easter egg step could be the next big thing that we need to progress in the overall storyline for Warzone and also Black Ops Cold War. And of course, whenever that becomes available, we're going to be covering it right here on the channel. So there you have it. That is everything that ended up changing in today's update, the latest intel for Call of Duty 2020, and what we can expect to see change in the future within Modern Warfare and Warzone. And that is going to wrap things up for today. If you guys enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like on it. And of course, if you're new here and you want to stay up to date with the latest Call of Duty news, intel, updates, leaks, setups, and everything in between, feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. That way you'll always know whenever I upload a new video. As always, if you want to check out any of my partners, be sure to use code IMMORTAL on all SCUF, G Fuel, Control Freak, and Respawn products. All of those links can be found in the description below. And once again, thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, take it easy, have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.